Depending where you're from, this is a tram, a trolley, or a streetcar. Whatever you call it, the urban railway is making a comeback. At one time, almost all city transit ran on rails. But then, buses and cars took over. New technology, no emissions, and ease of installation has given this form of mass transit a new lease on life. Trams run on electricity, and the latest versions can actually generate some of their own power. Let's see how they work. Choosing low emission trains over gas and diesel power is great for PR and government pocketbooks. But for this ride to appeal to the masses, you need more than that. To be number one in the public eye, you have to be efficient, reliable, and comfortable. Let's start with efficiency. Compared to other forms of mass transit, like buses, trams need a lot less energy and maintenance. Their electric motors are more powerful, quieter, and efficient than their gas-guzzling cousins. Trams get power from overhead lines fed by the local grid through something called a pantograph. It draws electrical current through points of contact. Early versions of this device had a problem. Constant rubbing from overhead wires wore out contacts and cut off power. Now, overhead lines are laid out in a zigzag pattern. So the pantograph slides side to side while the tram is in motion greatly extending the life of its contacts. Electricity flows from the wires to copper coils inside the motors. This creates a magnetic field that spins a magnet, and with it, the wheels. This machine can top 100 kilometers an hour, but rarely goes above 70 while working in cities. And that means it needs good brakes. But these ones aren't just for stopping. They also help feed electricity back into the system. A design feature that can save big on a city's power bills. When the machine needs to stop, the power is cut off to the motors. But the tram's momentum keeps the wheels spinning. And this allows the motors to generate power. It's called regenerative braking. The momentum spinning inside the motor creates an electric current that's sent back up through the machine, through its pantograph, along the overhead wire, and into the nearest tram. An electrical piggyback ride. And if the tram needs to stop in a hurry, it's also got sets of air brakes. In an emergency, say if something falls in front of the tram, the brakes all work together with a safety bar to prevent anything from getting stuck under the machine. Step two in winning over the public is reliability. And that means not breaking down. With no transmission, no potholes to deal with, no tires to go flat and no fuel to run out of, the only thing that really threatens this ride is a power failure. Trams like these do cost a lot more to purchase than buses, but they last decades longer and cost much less to run on a day-to-day -day basis. Coming across as good for the environment and city bank accounts is fine, but it doesn't explain why the average person prefers light rail to buses. For that, you need to look at this machine's third advantage, comfort and style. New models come with street-level ground clearance for easy on and off. They can grow with extra cars to give plenty of rush hour elbow room. And with steel wheels that can be kept true, the ride is super smooth. The low ride comes courtesy of a design that hides most of the tram's components on the roof. 
giving the wheels and axles plenty of room to provide support. Super strong pivot points seamlessly join the cars together and enable these machines to take on up to seven cars and still slide through corners. Accordion-like rubberized material fills in the gaps around the joints between the cars. Fast, smooth, and cheap to run. With cities increasingly building more right-of-ways for the tram, the other options are looking a little older every day.